Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. All right, guys, so we finished up the right panel. Now it's time to get onto the left panel, and we're going to start with presets. Now, in order to show you guys how presets work, let's first create uh, some settings on this image. Let's actually dial in a few settings. It doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. We just need to have something in there. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of exposure to this image. We'll add a little bit of contrast. Uh, I'm going to take my highlights up even more just to kind of blow out those windows completely. And then we're going to pull our shadows a little bit up and then take our whites. Actually, let's take the highlights down a little bit and just take the whites up. So that way it kind of blows out the whites, but not too much of the highlights. All right, and let's add a little bit of blacks to it by actually taking our blacks down. Uh, and then we're going to add a little bit more contrast to this. And that should look fine about right there. I'm going to take blacks up just a tiny bit. It's a little bit too much. And then with temperature, let's dial it down just a little bit to 3650. And great, we have dialed in some basic settings. Uh, we can also add a little bit of virance and a little bit of clarity. I think I said virance. Ooh, that sounds nice. All right, so clarity at 10, vibrance at 20, and that's fine, just so we have some settings made and adjusted. Now, what we're going to do now is create a preset with a setting. This may not be the preset that you guys want to create. It doesn't really matter. What typically you'd want to do with a preset is create a preset that would work across multiple images. Like maybe you create a certain black and white effect or a certain vintage effect. Those are what makes great presets. For us, we've just dialed in some basic settings right here, which is more like standard color correction. But... Uh, It'll still illustrate how this works. So let's go to the left side panel now under presets. And by the way, presets is labeled number one. So if we want to expand or collapse presets, we know that the hotkey is control shift one or command shift one on a Mac. So let's go to this plus, And all we do right now is we hit plus after we've dialed in our correct settings. And it says create new preset. And we're going to put this in a preset called, we'll just call it A to Z test. And we're going to create a new folder for this preset. And that folder is going to be SR Lounge. Oh no, we'll go LR4 Toots. Hit create. And now it creates a new folder for our preset. What we're going to do is just select the options that we want to have in this preset. So let's first hit check none because we didn't adjust every single thing. We did adjust the basic tone settings. So let's check basic tone and it selects exposure, contrast, and everything underneath it automatically. Now, whenever we basically apply this preset to another image, it's only going to affect the basic tone settings. So if we select, say, uh, oh, we also have clarity and vibrance, which, by the way, are not. Those are right here and right here. So, for example, if we say uh, we want to also uh, synchronize the noise reduction, even though we didn't assign a setting to noise reduction, when we sync this over to another image, it's going to basically reset it to whatever the noise reduction is in this image. So you don't want to necessarily check everything because you might want a preset that only affects certain things. Like maybe it only affects the color treatment or maybe it only affects, uh, you know, grain and kind of a vintage nice split toning effect. So you want to be very precise when you're setting your uh, presets. Otherwise, you're going to be setting presets that really don't work over a broad number of images. They only have very specific uses, which kills the entire point of a preset because you want your presets to kind of work over lots of different types of images as opposed to just one kind. Alrighty guys, so just to know that we can select almost any of these uh, process version 2012 options we have. Unfortunately, with Lightroom 4, one of my big gripes is that we still cannot select adjustment brushes in to be stored into presets. We can select graduate filters, but not adjustment brushes, which is kind of a big downer for me. But anyway, you can also click check all or check none to uh, select everything at once or to unselect everything at once. So for example, on this image where we only have a few things uh, you know, that we need to save in this preset, if everything is checked, it might be quicker just to hit check none and then check a few of these items rather than try and uncheck everything that's not applicable. Okay, so from here now we're going to uh, hit create. It's automatically going to add that preset to our LR4 Toots preset folder. And now if I apply, say, a different preset, like let's say we want to reset this, and I can apply that A to Z test preset again, and it automatically sets it back to where we were. Now again, this isn't a very useful preset because it probably isn't going to give us the right setting when we click it on something like this. It might work a little bit, but not very well. So when we create presets, we want to make them general and broad use presets, and we'll show you guys more on how we do that later on. I'm going to hit Control Z right now to undo that. We're going to go back to our original image. And what we're going to do is do a little preset management now. Preset management works very similarly to how you'd manage collections or manage anything else in Lightroom. You're going to either subtract out presets by just hitting minus and it's going to delete them. 
or you can change the names of them, or you can do whatever you want. So we just deleted that one. I'm going to hit Control Z to undelete it. I'm going to right click on that preset, and we have a few different options. We have options to create another new folder to organize presets. We have an option to apply this preset on import, which is something we definitely don't want to do because this is not a good import preset. But we will help you guys to create an import preset, particularly when we get to actually the workflow DVD. We're going to create several different uh, workflow presets to help you guys kind of maximize the speed and efficiency of your workflow. Next, we have the option to rename this preset. So if I don't like the A to Z test name, I can name it A to Z number two. Anything I want. Obviously, that is a crappy name as well. I can also go back to my menu. I can update with current settings. And now what this is going to do is if I make some modifications to this preset and I want to actually save those modifications. So let's say I make a modification to exposure, uh, contrast, and pull it down, and we'll do whatever we want over here. I can update that preset with the current settings, which are terrible, but we'll do it anyway, uh, by right-clicking and hitting update with current settings. And now we can modify this preset by selecting which areas we want to save in this preset. So I'm just going to hit cancel, uh, and then we're going to go and click on AZ number two to take us back to where we were. And let's right click again and see what else we have. We also have this uh, show in Explorer. And what this is going to do is show our presets folder in the Explorer window. So it shows where we're basically saving our developed presets. So when you guys get new presets, like you guys can actually purchase presets through SR Lounge and through other websites, you just drop them into this develop presets folder and now you have your presets brought into Lightroom. So it's a simple way to actually find that presets folder as opposed to actually looking through Windows or looking through your Finder window to try and locate it. All right, guys, going back to our menu, we also have the option to delete in here. We can also select minus from there. It does the exact same thing. We can also export our presets from this menu as well as import them. So with exporting, we choose a location for it. Let's say the desktop, and we're going to call this SDF because those letters are in a row. We're going to save it. And now we can import a preset just by selecting its location and the file. So we have SDF, and it's going to import that preset right into Lightroom with that name. So again, even though these presets are the same, it imports it with the file name of that preset. All right, guys, so we're going over this organization portion rather quickly because by now we've done so much like collection and keyword and all that different kind of management that you should understand basically how the uh, organization system works. Basically, just right click, choose whatever options you want. Let's clear this stuff out and let's actually move on to snapshots. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit delete. Actually what we're going to do is just delete this whole folder. So right click there, delete the folder and our presets are gone. And now we're going to go on to the snapshots panel. So let's collapse the presets panel by hitting Control shift one or command shift one on a Mac. And let's go to the next tutorial guys.